we thought that the probiotics are an integral part of a poultry production system and they are being used as a growth promoters especially when they were used to grow the chicks to a grow birds right so uh, that made us to think why not we uh, use these probiotics early in their life cycle that is from hatching egg itself so because, because it's a source of contamination of salmonella which can eventually lead to salmonella positive chicks uh, gradually cross contaminating other chicks and the growth birds in the farms even uh, leading to mass spread contamination of salmonella leading to foodborne outbreaks and stuff <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Walmsley, and I'm joined by Praveen Kasuri. Hey, Praveen, how are you doing today? I'm good, Dr. Walmsley. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, so fresh off uh, prelim passing, that exciting. So um, it's, it, you know, lots of great things to come. Uh, it's kind of like you're on the downhill slope now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just relieved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Praveen, you are, um, so you're at the University of Connecticut. Um, give me a little bit about yourself. Uh, so basically, I'm a DVM uh, graduate from India. So after my graduation, I happened to do my master's from University of London in anti-cancer drug discovery and development. So after the pursuing my master's, I went back to India and worked as a government veterinarian for a couple of years, where I happened to work uh, in slaughterhouses managing the slaughterhouses as a DVM graduate. So there I came across the importance of food safety, the meat inspections, how they uh, really have an importance in uh, controlling these foodborne outbreaks and food safety and public health aspect that made me interested to have uh, or pursue a career in food safety. So that made me to apply for a PhD degree at UConn. And right here, I am in my third year PhD at UConn working on food safety. Biology. So let's talk about your research. So you've been working in the area of um, w- working with salmonella and um, pre-harvest uh, salmonella prevention. I'd say uh, combined pipe, uh, complete production salmonella control, which okay. deals with both pre-harvest and post-harvest as well. Okay. And, and primarily through um, the use of uh, probiotics. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the probiotics that you've been using and um, some of the research that you've done with them. Uh, so before I begin my uh, research, I would like to give a background why we are interested in doing this research or something like that. Sure. So according to the CDC, we know that the poultry and poultry-related products account for 47% of these outbreaks in the United States. So it's uh, very crucial to control salmonella and the uh, poultry production pipeline which helps to control these outbreaks in the United States. So uh, after uh, highlighting this significance and our lab has been extensively working with probiotics and these probiotics were found to control uh, salmonella in the table eggs and uh, they were also found to increase the hatchability and the embryo growth in the hatching eggs and also the muzzle growth in the broilers as well. So based on all these findings uh, we thought that the probiotics are an integral part of a poultry production system and they are being used as a growth promoters, especially when they were used to grow the chicks to a grow birds, right? So uh, that made us to think, why not we uh, use these probiotics early in their life cycle, that is from hatching egg itself. So because, because it's a source of contamination of salmonella, which can eventually lead to salmonella positive chicks uh, gradually cross contaminating other chicks and the growth birds in the farms even uh, leading to mass spread contamination of salmonella leading to foodborne outbreaks and stuff so that made us to think and implement this uh, idea in our research project where we have used uh, two probiotic candidates based on a lot of preliminary studies so we have used the probiotics to spray the eggs before incubating them and during the course of incubation and we have used the probiotics uh, during simulated chick transport because chick transport is also a major uh, point at which um, a single contaminated chick may cross contaminate other chicks as well during transportation so in order to prevent that salmonella contamination we have uh, used these probiotics in water replaces not in a regular water so 
after that we have used the probiotics during growth or growth phase as well to see the impact of these probiotics uh, how they have a control on salmonella in this growth phase as well so uh, to say that from this research study we had a very fascinating or uh, impressive results from these studies and the probiotics are really having an effect in controlling salmonella all throughout from the hatcheries to the growth phase as well and oh, that's interesting so you're you, what type of probiotics are you using or what's the blend uh we are using individual cultures uh, mostly they are lactobacillus probiotics um the two probiotics are the lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus paracase we are using okay and are these are not commercially available at this time no, no, no. They're not commercially available. And then you've been able to kind of see through from really the hatching all the way to the, the you know, to the grow out to the uh, at the farm and then all the way to the fork for human consumption yes. and using these same probiotics. Yes. Yes. So I guess where are you all at then uh, in kind of the process for being able, sounds like you've gotten a lot of great results with them. So um, going with kind of taking the next steps with them. So we are trying to uh, how to mass product these probiotics so that we can have a commercial point of view. Oh, that's great. And um, so thinking about uh, probiotic application. So do you um, have? Did you have challenges in kind of figuring out the the right dose, um, or was all of this kind of, you, there was some background work that had been done um, and then you were able to, on the dosages, and then you were able to to know which ones to use for your dissertation work. Yeah, we have done a lot of preliminary trials, especially even though we have a lot, uh, large amount of preliminary data that is available in the lab from the previous research work that is done by various students. Uh, I have done uh, personally with different probiotics and how they act on salmonella because all the probiotics doesn't have the same uh, efficacy towards controlling the salmonella so sometimes even the right. as you said the doses might have an effect even uh, if you have a minute less quantity of dose they may not be viable lactobacillus present to have a control on the salmonella as well so uh, i think i almost spent an year to standardize all these uh, doses and how we apply the treatment on these eggs to control salmonella and how much salmonella we are recovering from the uh, eggs and stuff. So it almost took a year for me to standardize all these things before I start my main project work. So in some of, at the points of where you looked at this probiotic application in, in, in the incubator, for instance, um, were eggs contaminated with salmonella in the incubator? And then, you know, and then they were maybe challenged again later in the phase um whenever they're in the grow out phase can you walk us through that just a little bit yeah so since i told you it's a continuous uh, study where we have started with our hatching eggs and we continued all throughout the grow out phase right so we just inoculated the eggs during the hatching egg days where we inoculated at different time points we inoculated the eggs on day zero to simulate the incoming contamination even before they reached the hatchery so once we inoculate the eggs, we inoculate, uh, we incubated them in different incubators based on the treatment groups. And again, we re-inoculated the eggs on day 10 and day 18 because uh, in hatcheries, we usually candle the eggs on day 10. And on day 18, we transfer the eggs from the incubators to the hatches to make uh, to let them hatch on day 21, right? So there is a high possibility that eggs might get contaminated on day 10 or day 18 maybe by the farm personals who are infected with salmonella or maybe due to contaminated equipment. So in order to simulate that contamination as well, we have re-inoculated the eggs on day 10 and day 18. And day 18 is the last point of inoculation of salmonella on these eggs. After that point, we have not inoculated any salmonella in the chicks or hatchlings or the grower birds. The, the salmonella that we have inoculated on day 18 was continued till um, the end of the study so we have there is no need for us to inoculate the eggs at different stages of their lifespan i see and and at each point whenever you um inoculated the eggs with salmonella did you apply the probiotic treatment at the the same time or you only applied it once no we applied it at three different time points uh, that is also based on a lot of preliminary trials that we have done because since we are already handling the eggs on day 10 for candling, so it will be feasible for the industry to apply the treatment as well on day 10. 
and when we are moving from day 18 as well we can apply the treatment on day 18 as well also so we have applied on day 10 and day 18 and based on that application we found good results rather than single application on day zero ready for more sustainable poultry production new data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance gut health is more than a gut instinct Learn more today at www.anatox.com. And then taking it into the grow out, did you, um, I think you said that you, you had put it in the water, but um, have you looked at putting it in the feed or what, did you test it in the feed as well? No, we have uh, supplemented with feed, not in the water. Oh, okay. You've supplemented in the feed. Okay, great. Um, and then looking at it, using it in combination with any other products that might be um, commercially available or anything else that you're um, or maybe anything special about the diets um, when incorporating these probiotics into them? Since we are um, working on probiotics and we want to see the effect of our individual probiotic candidates on salmonella control, the feed that we have used for our studies is completely devoid of any commercial probiotics mm. or they don't have any essential oils in them, sure. which might have an effect of the feed itself. Sure. So we took care of those things and we have used a feed which is the word of probiotics and essential oils in them. Okay. And then you're able, um, is the, has the feed been pelleted? Or are you able to see that the your probiotics can withstand um, some of those commercial feed industry conditions? Uh, it's a pelleted, already pelleted feed. So we just have added our probiotics to the pelleted feed, which is which where they don't undergo any stress conditions. Sure. So right now, so maybe uh, once we standardize all the things, maybe we can include the probiotics during feed preparation process and see how the stresses will have an effect on probiotics and how they're going to affect on salmonella control as well. Gotcha. And so right now it's just looking at it from a post pellet liquid application. Yes. Yes. That's gotcha. True. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks for joining us today. We're about out of time. Um, I guess, is there anything you'd like to uh, leave our listeners or viewers with? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Westrix for giving this opportunity and I think it's really great opportunity especially for students to sh showcase their research other than the great platforms like the PSA, IPP. It's like it's available all throughout the year in YouTube and everyone can go and yeah. you'll gain a lot of uh, attention and importance, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Timed right after you finish your prelims. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Praveen. And thank you all for joining us today. It's another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.